I think that um, in my philosophy, what I've learned from a lot of special operators that I know is that uh, in the world, I mean, we live in a very violent world, and um, when someone comes at you, um, you gotta be willing, if they go here, you gotta be willing to go here. Like, you can't wait for them to go here, and then you go here to play this back, no, because that's life and death we're fighting with. So, uh, just a couple dirty, dirty tricks, combative-based things, um, striking from mixed martial arts influence as well. Um, also, if you don't carry a blade, I would encourage you to invest in a uh, very practical use self-defense blade and get training. Training is very important. So and also make sure it's legal. Different yeah, cities, different, different states, counties have different, different like, regulations. Blade yeah, blades, blade length. Yeah. And switch blades are sometimes illegal, no matter what the length. So definitely yeah. check up your laws. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. So so we're on the ground, <clears throat> back to the same position mm -hmm. as before we talked so about. I'm doing that. You choke. do the choke again. Mm -hmm. Right, or let's say, let's say actually, you know what? Let's say it goes for a strike. Oh, because okay. because there's like these these crazy wild fists that we're gonna yeah. more more than likely gonna see. So I gotta protect my face, yeah. tuck my chin, and uh, you know be ready to get hit because I'm gonna get hit. But also be aware if whatever the ground is behind me, if it's concrete, like this is gonna suck no matter what. So in altercation, one, you don't get to choose when it happens. You can choose where you're at, but like sometimes it just comes to you. That's my philosophy. And two, um, you gotta be aware of your surroundings. So if you get taken down and it's concrete. Gotta protect your head. Your back's probably gonna be already kind of bruised up a little bit, so just be, I mean, just, you know, be accepting of that and know that the fight's not over until he's done. And you don't, you know, so there you go. So we're mm -hmm. down on the ground, and let's see, he's gonna, you know, go for a strike. He's, he's usually, here. right? Usually, yeah. I think on the ground, they'll strike like this. Yeah, they're yeah. like crazy over Maybe they go like this. Or that, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. So let's say he goes here, mm -hmm. I'm moving, mm -hmm. right? I'm moving. I'm not staying that's flat on my back, I'm moving. I'm using, I might get hit still, that's fine but I'm, I'm using my arms to help block the blow. Mm, right, so we're here, he's gonna throw over, boom. I turn into him, yeah. so I'm not on my back, I'm not like here taking the, boom, exactly. right, taking these rocks. I'm turning in, boom. I would go for the underhook. Mm. And then for me, cause he's probably, I mean, he's probably right hand. Most people are right hand dominant. Mm -hmm. So like, this is fine, I'm, I'm like, he's probably gonna throw something here, yeah, but it's okay, cause I'm gonna, I'm not gonna wait for that, and I'm gonna go, Boom! Oh! Elbow right in the face. So it's very. People talk about hit, getting a funny bone hit. In reality, right when you bend this elbow, this is as hard as a rock. So you level the face mm. right away. Just boom! Just as much force you got. You can't be nice. Like if someone attacks you, you can't just be nice and wait for them to like hurt you. So he goes over. Let's say he's here. Boom, I turn in, go for the hook, boom, elbow Ooh. right away. Ooh. No hesitation, just like, it's like, like driving a car. Boom, boom. I mean, I'm preferential on, on elbows and knees versus punches, because you could be a great striker, and just one fraction of thing off and you could break something, your finger, or your hand. What are you gonna say? Yeah, and guys, if you practice this, try to wear some kind of head protection yeah. just in case, just so you and don't get elbows you in the face. Slip, yeah, if you yeah. slip. Yeah. That would be awesome, like, if you're training this, um, I would encourage you, yeah, buy some gear, so like, and don't like go 100%, but if someone has something on, maybe like wear a mouthpiece and you like throw, throw it to feel what it's gonna feel like, that quick twitch. Yeah. So we're here, yeah. he throws over, boom, I turn, bam, Ooh. or I pull him into me, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And then from here, I slap. Slapping is so underutilized, I slap the shit out of him. Yeah. This is gonna mess with his equilibrium anyway. Yeah. Right, that little bam. Right into his ear, mm -hmm. and he's like he's gonna be a little disoriented from it. Mm -hmm. So um, now let's talk about. So you have that. So let's we we'll talk about three different things. One, he swings with the right. Mm -hmm. Boom, go over. Boom, elbow right away. Right or pull down so you can be elbow, come back, pull down. Boom, slap right to the head. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll go. Let's say he strikes left arm, left arm, <laughs> left arm. Yeah. Words. So he goes. He goes right first. Yeah, go right first. Boom, and then here. I go right to the crook of the elbow, because this is kind of where he's weak anyway. Like, he, he can use his chest and his shoulder to push down, but if I'm over here, I'm pushing up with my back, right? I'm using my hips to push up anyway, too. Mm. So I'm hips, back, push, mm. or chest, excuse me, chest. So we're here, I have control of this, and I can start escaping my hips. I can plant my foot, go for the wrist, start to climb, go for the triangle. <laughs> so a couple things can happen, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Here. Boom. Here, yeah. So we're here. I'm trying to think what's practical. So mm -hmm. we're here. Boom. So control is big thing, right? Mm -hmm. Hand control, wrist control, right? Being able to control the inside of the bicep head, yeah. the inside yeah. the crook of the elbow, under hooks. So we're here, he's gonna go. Boom. I'm already turning my hips. Right? I don't want to stay flat. 
go for the crook. So I take his pocket here. There's so many things. So many things that could be done. But let's just keep it simple. Let's, let's, let's keep it simple and let's do, let's do the slap, the elbow, and control of the both arms. So let's go back to the, he, he goes to the overhand. Boom. Right away, I'm gonna drive. I'm here, I'm using momentum essentially to swivel my hips and throw that elbow as hard as I can right across his eyes. Because if you can cut right above the eye, right, psychologically speaking, he starts to bleed, he's not gonna wanna fight. He's not gonna wanna fight. So we'll keep it this one, so we go over, boom, boom, right into it, or the nose. Whatever I can hit on his face is money. He's not wearing a mouthpiece, probably break some teeth, right? Break the nose, cut right above the eye, maybe break some eye socket. <laughs> I know, I'm a nice guy, I know, I'm too nice. Uh, so there's this, this, that, so I wanna encourage you guys, think about it like this, over, I'm blocking, going for the underhook, and then rotating my hips, boom, right into it, and chances are, He's gonna tip over anyway from that force. So I could gain a mount position with that elbow strike. Well, let's go, uh, let's go with slap. Mm -hmm. So boom, hook, right behind the head, hook it, boom, slap. Immediately, aim for that head. Not here, not down, but in. You're forcing air into the ear. Maybe pop the eardrum if you do it hard enough. And then the last one we talked about was controlling both arms. Just get in the habit of controlling both arms. Right, so we're here. Boom, boom. Right, I'm moving with, oh, I take a strike. I might take a strike, I probably will. It's fine, it's okay. So I'm up, boom, boom. Now I'm controlling the bicep, controlling the elbow. Climb, climb, climb. Right, swim. Bunch of cool stuff you can do from there. But just keep it simple. I encourage you guys, it's a lot of information. I should encourage you to go for the elbow strike, being in a habit of controlling both arms, using your hips, not laying flat, turning into him, throwing the slap. It's demoralizing to be slapped. In general, I think what we're learning from doing this with Clinton is that if you're doing any kind of grappling training, make sure you think about strikes that could occur in the position too. Yeah. Because a lot of people, they overtrain sport jiu-jitsu, they're, they're maybe yeah. keeping their face open or something. I was doing this when I was in China last year. I was sparring with some, like, they were nieces. They, they didn't know anything about rules of jiu-jitsu. I was just yeah. like, hey, come. So, like, he came, he came into my guard or something just started either, he was headbutting or he started hitting me. Yeah. And then at, at first I was like, wait, don't do that. But I'm like, no, that's good. It's yeah. good that he's doing this. He can't hurt me. He's really small, but too, it's good to make me realize what can happen because this person doesn't know jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are no rules. Like when it comes to like being on the, on the ground, like there are no rules. Like, yeah. Jujitsu has made like, old school jujitsu. These got slapped. Like there were slaps involved to yeah. demoralize and, 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 you know, stop your opponent from thinking they're going to win to like, like beat them before you beat them. There were, there were no rules. Yeah. You know, they got Vale Tudo in Brazil. Yeah. So and you also got like create space, boom, right in the face. Yeah. Like there are all these different things, you yeah. know, that you could do.